Power Boat Television, North America's premier boating show. Here's this week's Mercury Marine My Boat feature. Close quarter maneuvering and docking can make even an experienced boater a little bit nervous. Now to get around that, you might want to consider installing a thruster. So this week on My Boat, we're going to install a side shift stern thruster. Well, now that we've got the boat on shore, the first task here is going to be to dry fit all of the hardware, the mounting brackets, to select the correct position for the stern thruster. And it has to be at least five and a half inches below the waterline on the boat, or deeper if at all possible. Task one was to assemble the optional stern extension mount and mounting bracket to clear the transom anode and locate the thruster well below the waterline. When assembling the system, it is key that you use the supplied anti-seize compound on all of the stainless hardware. With this done, the mounting brackets were secured to the stern thruster. After marking the center line, a pair of helping hands aided in positioning the stern thruster and marking its mounting location. Next, the first mounting hole was drilled, then the backing plate was used as a template to mark and drill the other holes. To ensure the transom was watertight, a generous amount of below the waterline sealant was applied to the holes and surface. Finally, the thruster was lifted into place and the mounting bolts inserted. On the inside of the transom, more sealant was applied. The backing plate was then slid onto the bolts and the washers and lock nuts secured. Now we're finished with the real messy stuff, drilling the holes through the hull and working with the Sikaflex as always. Now we're going to move on to the electrical hookup, starting with the cables here from the motors to the inside of the transom to the control box. First holes were drilled for the air vent line and two power cables. Then the vent line was inserted through the transom as well as both power cables. Next, a generous amount of sealant was applied to all of the holes and forced into the transom by working the cables. Additional sealant was also applied inside the transom. The stern thruster's motor controller was mounted on the transom. Next, the 12 volt motor cables were cut to the length required, then stripped, and the supplied compression terminals were installed. The last prep was to apply the heat shrink tubing to the connection. The port motor cable was then attached to Terminal 1 and the starboard to Terminal 2 on the motor controller. For safety, terminal boots were also installed. After making up the correct length of battery cables, utilizing the supplied wire, compression terminals, and heat shrink tubing, the negative cable was connected to the negative terminal on the controller and to the battery common ground terminal. And the positive was connected from the controller to the positive terminal on the first 1000 amp battery. A jumper cable was run from the first battery to a second 1000 amp battery to deliver the required power. Well, we've got all of the major mechanicals and major heavy gauge wiring for the batteries and power. Next up is the control system, and you're gonna to wanna to mount that close to where your shifters are. So I'm gonna select this location on the helm for the joystick. Using a hole saw, the mounting hole was made in the helm. After laying the template over the mounting hole, the holes from the mounting bolts were drilled. Finally, the joystick was set in place and the bolt secured from the underside of the helm. After fishing the control cable from the engine compartment, the connector was hooked up to the multi-wires in the cable and plugged into the joystick. The final hookup at the helm was connecting a positive line to the ignition to turn the system on. Back at the control unit, Ring terminals were crimped on the individual wires, which were connected to the appropriate terminals on the controller. After a quick dry land test, it was time to splash the boat. Putting the side shift stern thruster to the test clearly demonstrated how well it helped position the stern while docking. Rotating the boat in its own length was greatly enhanced by the thruster, quickly accelerating it around. And yes, while underway, the side shift stern thruster was well clear of the water. Well, it took us a day to install side shift stern thruster, and it really was straightforward. If you've got some basic mechanical skills and a little bit of electrical system knowledge, you can take this on as your own DIY project, and it's a great investment. 
This twin inboard cruiser generally handles quite well around the docks, but the addition of the stern thruster builds the confidence that much better. The boat rotates faster and you can actually make it walk sideways.